I'm Barbara from Flamingo Island Designs and I'm here today to tell you about fusible applique the flamingo way. This is our method of fusible raw edge applique for making art quilts. I want to show you one of our patterns. This pattern is printed directly on freezer paper as are most of our patterns so there's no tedious tracing involved. They're ready for the fun to begin. This is what one of our pattern pages looks like. It's printed onto the freezer paper. The back side of the pattern is the shiny side that will adhere to the fabric when it's ironed on. Now this may seem like a pretty complicated process, but also included in our pattern is a placement and layout sheet that will show you exactly how to assemble each piece and where it goes on the finished project as well. The project we're going to be working on today is called Isle of Flamingos and it's a tropical scene showing several flamingos. Some are close in the foreground and we're going to be working on those shortly when I show you how the actual fusible process works. The supplies we need for today's project is an applique pressing sheet. It has a Teflon coating on it so that the fusible and your fabric won't stick to it. It opens up to a nice big size and it's heavy duty Teflon coated plastic and will be good for many, many uses for many years to come. We'll also be using freezer paper. This comes in eight and a half by 11 sheets in a pack of 50. It's a heavy duty freezer paper and it's made to go through an inkjet printer. We'll also be using Misty Fuse. This is our fusible of choice. It comes in black and white and the reasons we prefer this fusible is because it has a very soft hand. It won't gum up your fabric when you sew through it. It makes a firm bond between the layers of the fabric and it won't gum up your needle when you sew through it. You'll also need a small sharp pair of scissors for cutting around the small edges of the appliques. And of course we need an ironing surface and an iron. The iron will be used on a dry only setting and it's set for cotton. Okay. Now we're going to assemble bird A and bird B which we saw in the foreground of the quilt. This pattern piece has all of the components for putting together the birds and they're labeled as bird A and B and then each piece is numbered in the order which you're going to assemble it. We're going to be assembling them on a Teflon coated pressing sheet. We're going to open that up over here on top of our pressing mat and our iron is set at dry only, no steam, on a cotton setting. So I've chosen one of the pattern pieces here for bird A. This is his main body piece and I've cut it out of the pattern sheet with a little bit of paper around it. Then I cut a piece of my fusible web, which we prefer to use Misty Fuse. This is a black version of it. It also comes in white. I'm laying that down on top of my pressing sheet first. Then on top of that, I'm placing the fabric, which I've cut to size. And then over the top of that, I place the pattern piece. Now it's ready to be pressed. I want to press straight down with my iron. I don't want to slide it back and forth because I don't want my pattern piece to shift and I don't want to wrinkle my fabric. You need about oh seven to ten seconds and then we can give it a moment to cool and then it's ready to be peeled off of the pressing sheet and here it is with the fusible on the back and the piece is on the front and it's ready to be cut out and used in assembly of the individual bird. Showing here are all the components for assembling Bird B and each one has been assigned to its specific color of fabric and now they are ready to be cut out. I'm going to use a small sharp pair of scissors to do that. If I can find them, there they are. Okay. And as I cut along the edge of my fabric, I want to turn the actual piece of fabric and not the scissor. The scissor remains stationary and this allows me more control to make these sharp little cuts 
and I'm going to continue on around until this piece is cut and all the rest of them are cut as well. Okay, we're ready for the fun part now. We're going to assemble the applique. We're working on bird B. I've peeled the freezer paper patterns off of most of the pieces and here's the legs which are numbered 1 and 2. I want them to stay where they need to be while I'm working on this so I'm just going to press them with the tip of my iron so they don't slide around. So that was piece 1 and 2 and the body here is piece 3. So I'm going to Position that right over the top of the legs there, and if I forget how it goes, I can refer back to my assembly guide. Now here is the black part of the wing, and I want to show you how easy it is to just peel this freezer paper piece off of there and set it aside, and it's reusable. I can use it again and make another bird later on. So I slid that tail piece right under there, so the black tail feathers are sticking out the back. Now, I'm not sure if that's exactly where I want the body, so I'm not going to press it yet. I'm going to add the wing piece over the top, and I want to watch this line right here for a nice smooth curve. And now I think I have them, oops, there, slid out again. So you can see how easy it is to reposition. And then I can take my iron, press straight down, no sliding. All the pieces have fused together. Now the last two pieces I have are the continuation of the beak. We've got a light color that's going to go on here first. I'm holding my scissor in my hand. In case I need to slide these pieces around a little bit, I can use the tip of the scissor to do that. Oops, we put that one on upside down. There we go. All right, that looks like the beak is in line just where I want it. So I can press on that, and again, without sliding, and there is our finished bird B, all assembled and ready to place onto the background. It's cooled a little bit, so I can go ahead and peel the whole component right off of the background, and there it is, all finished up. Now if you're a little bit messy like I tend to be sometimes, some of the fusible got onto my pressing sheet here and I don't want to keep it there so I can take my handy scraper tool and I can just scrape right across that little spot and it peels right off of there ready to be thrown away and my pressing sheet is ready for many many more uses. 